Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Suraj in Cloud and in this series of EKS Tales, in this episode we are going to see what kind of uh, nodes that we can use with the EKS cluster. Uh, if you haven't seen uh, my other episodes from EKS Tales, do check them out. Uh, they were mostly about the control plane logging, envelope encryption of secrets, and uh, how you can spin up the cluster and uh, how does the architecture looks like and stuff like that and also if you haven't subscribed to our channel uh, do subscribe uh, cool so let's quickly dive into it so as i said we are going to talk about the types of node so mainly there are three types of node which are available in the eks uh, th name of name for these are managed node groups, self managed node groups, and the Fargate, right? So we'll go over them one by one and we'll try to see what they offer and what they don't, and then eventually we will know the difference between them, right? So let's start with manage node group. Okay managed node group so the name itself indicates managed right what does that mean aws partially manages your nodes group right and they offer some sort of capability uh, which looks like it is managed and it eases some of your uh, management load right so that you can focus on some better problems Let's look at this diagram. Uh, I have taken this diagram from the EKS best practices website by AWS. Now on this website, if you see on the left hand side, which is this, uh, is the control plane, whereas this is the data plane, right? And the orange color indicates that's AWS responsibility and the blue color showcases your responsibility as a customer, right? We'll see similar diagrams in the self-managed and the Fargate as well, right? Now, in this particular case, if you see, <clears throat> along with control plane, OS, Kubelet, CRM, CRI, and AMI configuration is also AWS responsibility, whereas node scaling, VPC, and all other workloads is uh, user responsibility, right? So here worker node scaling means uh, cluster auto scaler or carpenter or similar solution. Now, when we say OS kubelet here and AMI configuration, what does that mean is, uh, let's see. Now operating system or AMI, right? Uh, as one of the piece in that AWS responsibility was operating system. Now with managed node group, AWS offers <coughs> EKS optimized AMI uh, based on either Amazon Linux or uh, Bottle Rocket. Now, Bottle Rocket is a purpose made uh, operating system for containers. Uh, it's kind of very similar to uh, Flatcar Linux or Core OS uh, for that matter. Right? <clears throat> now, these optimized AMI, which are built by AWS, it already has re required tools to run a particular node such as kubelet with all the configuration aws arm authenticator and stuff like that it's all uh, in this ami right you can optimize as a, you can uh, customize we'll see later how we can do that for for that uh, for this operating system thing you can only use ami based on these two you cannot use any other linux based ami <clears throat> now there there can be some partners with AWS which may offer, but in a very basic thing, uh, simply you cannot, you have to use this AMI. <clears throat> because we have to use these AMIs, you cannot run containers which requires Windows on managed node group. For that, you may need to define some other node group which we will see. <clears throat> From storage side, you can use, there is no restriction. You can either use EBS, uh, EFS, or like a S3, or uh, there is no restriction basically when it comes to storage in a managed node group. And 
if you for some reason if you want to access these nodes <clears throat> you can either use ssh or ssm uh, ssm is a facility uh, by aws itself uh, using these two you can access the nodes right <clears throat> daemon set now you must be wondering daemon set is a daemon set is a common terminology in uh, kubernetes why this is mentioned here in upcoming slides you will see why this was important to mention but thing to mention is you can use daemon set with a managed node group arm um, so there must be some workloads which may need arm processor so aws does offer uh, in some instant type which has arm processor in it such as graviton so if your workload needs <coughs> arm with managed node group you can select the uh, arm based graviton instance type uh, along with the managed node group and you can use it right uh, provided that the operating system you can use is either amazon linux or bottle rocket for ai ml and deep learning workload you can use instant type with the gpus and with the inferentia chip inferentia chip is uh, aws developed chip specifically for deep learning workloads right but one catch here is you can use all this but only on amazon linux because it's the only thing which is supported in a uh, managed node group <clears throat> along with all this major things <clears throat> the when you spin up a node group the underlying auto scaling group is managed by aws itself uh, it automatically tags every uh, ec2 resources for auto discovery which is being used for cluster auto scaling if you want to customize uh, your ami <coughs> uh, sorry if you want to customize your node and add few other extra things or you want to add some bootstrap argument to the kubelet uh, you can do that uh, allow, you can just take eks optimized ami and with the help of launch, launch template you can add like a cloud config and stuff to add few more things in it right so that's quite possible now one very important thing when it comes to node is the billing so though few things are partially managed by aws you don't pay for that management you will only pay for the ec2 resources that you are using right <clears throat> now that was more about the uh, managed nodes uh, most of the things are managed but if you want you can do some sort of customization in it and the uh, you can use gpu ai ml workloads everything that you want provided that it is uh, based on amazon linux or bottle rocket right now let's move on to the self managed node uh, now we know that managed node group so when we will go on to the self managed we'll we'll be able to see the difference right now similar to that diagram there is the self managed worker diagram now if you see carefully there is no orange section in the left side of the diagram right now with that saying as the name also indicate the self manage so the whole data plane is your responsibility as a user responsibility right so next operating system as i said in previous diagram everything on the data plane is user responsibility that means it starts with operating system or the ami now in this case you can use amazon linux bottle rocket flat car windows any other linux which is ubuntu you can use any of these on addition to this you can also use the eks optimized ami which are used in a managed node group uh, with that you get all the configuration by your uh, pre-installed and stuff so you can use those amis as well with the storage pretty similar to managed one you can use ebs efs there are no restrictions on storage again daemon set these are also yet another node it just that the management is on the user side aws don't manage these things 
but demon set does run on it similar to managed node group uh, you can use ssm or ssh to access these nodes as well now again ai ml deep learning uh, workloads you can use uh, gpu based instances or inferentia chip uh, you can use all this for your ai ml and deep learning workloads but again the same condition is you have to use only amazon linux even if you are using self managed node group you have to use only amazon linux for it right so maybe you can define some node group which is specific to this based on amazon linux and few node groups maybe based on your own operating system or something similar to managed node group it does support arm architecture uh, with the help of these graviton processor so if you have arm workloads you can run in self managed as well now along with this there are few things which are do it yourself way so for example the auto scaling group in managed node group it was managing the asg for you as well here you have to manage your own auto scaling group you have to manage all sorts of tagging for cluster auto scaler you have to manage the launch configuration you have to manage your own kmi and the kubelet configuration as well right one thing here is if you don't want to manage the kubelet on your own and all the configuration you can simply use eks optimize emi as well right and similar to what we discuss in the managed node group billing which is very important aspect since everything is self managed right you will only pay for the ec2 resources that you use and because you are already paying for the control plane separately as well right we'll go uh, we'll keep one episode uh, dedicated to the billing how we can see that how much we are spending on control plane and other stuff right now that was more about the self managed node group where everything is managed by you now in majority of cases where you can run managed node groups and let aws take care of few things but there can be some cases where you want to run your own stuff right so self managed node group there is an option for that now third very interesting bit is fargate right you must have heard fargate with ecs right uh fargate with ecs uh, and in the similar diagram if we see now again on the left hand side os kubelet ami is orange that means that's aws responsibility even the scaling is aws responsibility right now in very short one liner what is fargate is on demand right size compute capacity for a container right that means if you spin up a container it will give you compute for that particular requirement right and what does that mean is there is no machine there is no ec2 right in upcoming slide we'll see how that will work out as i said it is not an ec2 it spin up its own micro vm for that particular container right now there are many downsides in fargate for example you cannot run container which run requires windows so that means only basic containers which require linux you can run these containers only you cannot use aiml or gpu workloads no arm no graviton based stuff you cannot use public subnets as well right and not just these you cannot choose or configure ami you cannot do ssh or ssm on these nodes you cannot use ebs you cannot use daemon set now you, now this is the point where <clears throat> we mentioned the daemon set in the previous node groups right you cannot use daemon set here you cannot modify kubelet configuration as well you cannot use privilege pod because it's a micro vm and 
that micro VM, that environment is specific for that pod, right? So you cannot do anything on the host level. So is it any good, right? Like if there are so many restrictions, what does it offer, right? Now, if we look on other side of it, in this case, you can use container which require Linux. In this case, you can you use just basic uh, processor. You can use private subnets. Uh, these things are no, but on other side, you don't need to manage them, right? And there was no EBS and on that side, there is EFS which you can use. And the very best thing here is you only pay for memory and CPU usage, right? Now, what does these all indicates is you don't need to care about the actual node, which is a EC2 machine. It's just a micro VM specific for your container, right? So you don't need to uh, worry about any vulnerability on the operating system. You don't need to worry about any auto scaling group. Uh, you don't need to worry about anything. You simply define your pod YAML and it will spin up a Fargate uh, instance for it and that's it, right? And the auto scaling and stuff is meant taken care already for these type of instances. Now, because these instances, these Fargate pods are little bit different, networking is little bit different than the self-managed and managed node group. You can only use network load balancer and application load balancer with the Fargate with IP targets only, right? And what that means is because, because it is a micro VM running only one pod and you cannot run daemon set, that means you cannot run VPC CNI daemon set pod or if you are using Cilium or any other, you cannot run these. So it is not technic technically utilizing the CNI networking capability. It is using the underlying VPC networking capability, right? So that's why it gets the IP from the VPC itself. That's why the networking is a little bit different, right? Now, these were the three different types of node group. They are special in their own cases, like with managed node group, you have to manage very few things so you can focus on bet other problems there can be a use case where you uh, want to manage your own amis and stuff maybe for security reasons or maybe some company policies or something you can do that there is no major difference as such provided that with self-manage you do everything yourself whereas in manage aws takes care of few things partially but with Fargate, as we discussed, it's a little bit different, right? Isn't it? So you spin up a pod, a container, and it spin up a micro VM for you. There's nothing else in it. You cannot modify anything. You don't worry about anything. You pay only for the CPU and memory and not the whole instance, uh, which is fairly good, but it does come with a cost. But yeah, there can be a use case where you can use these kind of things to minimize the cost, minimize the attack surface and stuff like that. So these were the comparison between the node groups that we had in upcoming episodes. We'll cover uh, each of them one by one uh, in more depth, right? Till then, uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, do subscribe and share this video and let us know in the comment section if you have any questions or if you want me to cover anything else right till then bye bye